Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles. My name is Danny DeLillo. I'm delighted to be here in Los Angeles and join the amazing director, uh, Rachel Handler, over in Jersey City. How are you doing, Rachel? <laughs> Thank you so much, Danny. I am doing well. I am hanging in there. Pandemic fine. <laughs> <laughs> We're hanging in there. Um, but for those that haven't seen how much I, how much I work, let's take a look at a clip. I'm Rachel. I lost my leg in a car accident eight years ago, and I just had a surgery a few months ago and got this bill in the mail right after I lost my job due to the pandemic. Apparently, they were my anesthesiologist. I didn't realize that I would have to choose between being awake for intensive leg surgery or paying my rent. Uh, Rachel, I'm, I'm so happy to welcome you back after the film festival. Um, I, I'm so glad that you made this film uh, with us and, and I'm so glad that you're a finalist of Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge as well, which is a wonderful, wonderful um, a festival. Um, but for those that haven't seen your documentary, tell us a brief synopsis. Sure. My documentary, How Much to my worth is basically a documentary exploring the failures of the U.S. health system uh, through the lens of four women with disabilities. And I'm one of those women. Um, I lost my leg in a car accident eight years ago. And right as the pandemic started, I had a major surgery on my leg. So, you know, I checked with my insurance to make sure that everything was covered. And, you know, I would only have like a $250 copay. Um, but then a few months later, I got a $1,200 bill in the mail for anesthesia. So I was just like, you know, you've got to be kidding me. It was so frustrating. So I made this film with three other women with disabilities just to share our stories about how hard it is to be someone who's disabled in America where you know, we have to pay for wheelchairs out of pocket sometimes. These like life-changing, life-saving necessities um, are not covered by insurance. And yet insurance companies are making billions of dollars while I can't get a prosthetic leg to walk. Andrea can't get a wheelchair to get to work, you know? So we wanted to make a documentary where we could share our stories and spread awareness that this is happening in America. It's like a third world country here with our healthcare system. I am, I am over the moon that, that you made this film. I'm so desperately um, sad that, you know, all four of you have to go through as an example of many people in this country. Now, and I, I love this, I adore this country so much, but the healthcare system is the biggest scam on American people. It is a scam, you know, there is, it is unreal that, you know, there are many other countries similar to ours that don't even have to think about money when it comes to healthcare because it's all included. And then there are people, great people like you, like the four women you put in your film, including yourself, who have to deal with their own situation and what they're going through. And on top of that, have to think of how much it's gonna cost. I mean, it's it's ludicrous and it, it makes me angry. And I think that your film should be put in every single of, you know, government officials mailbox to remind them that this has got to change. Um, now you take, you say this amazing story um, that's true and it's going on and it's existing. And ha where was the moment for you where you're like, I have to make a film about this and, and, and kind of where did you want to want it to go to and reach beyond the film festival? Cause it's such an important film. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I would say the moment that I knew I needed to talk about health insurance was when I had to switch from my dad's health insurance plan. I aged out of it. And I realized that being a freelancer, finding health insurance that would cover my prosthetic legs was nearly impossible. Uh, I actually, I wanted to live in New York City and I couldn't because at the time they had a one limb per lifetime rule there with their insurance. And it's still, I thought that rule was deemed illegal, but it's still there. They just added the words, they'll also cover replacements um, and repairs. Mm -hmm. So, but they still have the wording, one limb per lifetime, which is so limiting. And, you know, it's hard enough to lose a leg. It's hard enough to become paralyzed. It's hard enough 
to become disabled in some way, um, to need, you know, cochlear implants or some sort of hearing device. And then on top of, you know, adapting to life as a person with a disability, you also have to, you know, start begging for help, begging for money to get the things that you need now. It's just, um, it's just not right. So when I had to switch my insurance, I realized how bad it really is out there. And I'm, I'm so privileged that I was able to stay on my dad's health insurance for as long as I was, um, because I, I didn't know how hard it was until a few years after I lost my leg. Yeah. If I had lost my leg and right away had so many problems with insurance, I just, I would have lost it. I don't know. And there are so many people who are in that situation where they're dealing with at the same time, the loss of their leg, going through that grieving process, and then also having to figure out how to pay for a prosthetic leg. And some people just lose hope. You know, there are so many veterans who become disabled and lose hope because they're not getting the care they need. Oh, I, I mean, Rachel, you're so, I mean, please know, like, I mean, you're such a good person for just having a heart, not just for your own journey, but for these three other amazing women that were in this film for putting this as a, a you know, a, a national fiasco that it actually is that, you know, I mean, you only hope that anyone that has to go through an experience like you or the three other women, you only hope that you, ha you get to have everything you want to, to grieve, go through therapy, adapt, all of those things. The last thing you want is this extra burden of, of thinking, well, how am I going to live now with, with this financial burden? You know, it's, 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 it's downright cruel, you know, um, it really is. And I'm, I, I again, like, I, I know that's why your film is so important. And, and through all the trials and tribulations you've had to go through up till now, you know, you, you put your, you know, you put your neck out to make a film about it and then include these other amazing women. Now, obviously sharing your own story is one thing. How did you approach the rest of your subjects to be in this film, how was that process for you? Honestly, it was amazing. I mean, I've known Jaleesa for probably about eight years now, um, and she's been a good friend to me, and she's been in my other films that I've made for the Disability Film Challenge. And uh, we've had many talks about how hard it's been for her to get a prosthetic arm. So as soon as I saw the, the genre this year for the film challenge was documentary. I knew that I had to include her in this and luckily she said yes. Um, and then my other friend Denise was, uh, I, I thought she would be a great fit for this documentary to show a different perspective as an American who moved to Oslo, Norway where you know she went from losing her leg here in america to her parents having to pay like twelve thousand dollars to transport her on an ambulance to a different hospital um having trouble getting the legs and athletic equipment she needed to now being in norway where she can get the things that she needs for free um yeah. so i thought having her perspective would be amazing just to show the differences um and then Andrea uh, is the seated nurse on Instagram. She's a nurse who uses a wheelchair. Yeah. And I just saw her Instagram and thought she was amazing and wanted to reach out to her because I figured, you know, we're talking about healthcare and health insurance. So why not have the perspective of someone who has a disability is, and is also in that industry? Yeah. So I reached out to her and luckily she responded to like this stranger's Instagram message and it. agreed to do the film. And actually, Andrea just won the Craig H. Nielsen Award and wow. she was on Good Morning America oh. and was gifted a million dollars oh my goodness wow right right i knew wow. she was incredible when i saw her instagram but i had no idea the depth of her her caring and her heart and um her passion for you know making the healthcare industry accessible so i i'm gonna cry right now i'm just so no, beautiful uh, <laughs> i've got goosebumps yeah. around me that's beautiful i'm so happy to to hear that wow i mean that's yeah. i mean I, I mean that's amazing and and it and it and it just goes to show what it means when you you know goodness me all the things you've had to go through up till now but just 
actually fighting your way through to put your voice out there and 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 let people hear it and 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 how vital that is and we don't realize the impact of a film of what it can do um and i i think you're absolutely right i mean i think it was a really great example of having someone in your film as well that moved to another country to literally pay for it um you know me and my partner we've had the same conversation it's like well if we have anything serious because i mean let's face it and as you've been through yourself rachel we don't know what life is going to bring us we don't know what life may serve us and we got to be prepared for all kinds of things and i know that majority of people are not going to be able to pay for things that are immediate like this and require immediate care and it's got to change um you know i i thought the whole style of your of your film and how you had these you know i, I just amazing voices in the world you know that that you can just tell are just you know just advocating for each other i mean i'm so glad that you, you know your voice is so powerful and you know it's spreading well and and, and i want it to continue what did you because you know we all know this is a serious subject but i think when you really delve into it the way that you did you realize just the, the depth of how immediate and serious it is for people that have a disability and and the cost that's are involved what did you want your audience to take from it and 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 and, and where do you want to see us go from here yeah so when i made this film with my co-director catriona rubenis stevens um we asked our subjects to send us footage of themselves just living life you know doing daily things like putting away groceries or walking down the street or getting dressed for work because we really wanted to emphasize that we're not just women with disabilities we are just women period and you know disability it spans you know the whole gamut of diversity you know anyone can become disabled at any time so we really wanted to show that we are just human beings living our daily lives as people with disabilities but we are not able to do that as easily because of the challenges we face getting the mobility aids that we need and getting the you know help that we might need as people with disabilities and it's not like you know we're asking for a thousand dollars to get like a fancy new like shoe or something we're asking for for money to pay for a new foot because our foot is broken and we can't walk on it anymore yeah. so yeah yeah but but even even with that being said i mean the fact is is that you should be entitled to that i mean it's it's you know it's it's and again it's what it's not even just the cost is that it's actually the access that is 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 also you know part of the the, the, the difficult journey as well um yes. you know what well, i mean regards obviously you 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 hope that the decision makers that you know are the, what those that are in power and it's difficult right now but those that are in power to make those decisions what would you kind of want to say to them i would want to tell them that we deserve to feel like ourselves pre-disability pre-accident we deserve to be able to do all the things that are technologically possible right now. Mm -hmm. uh, don't let, you know, the money to make a prosthetic leg or get a wheelchair hold us back by not allowing us to get the medical equipment we need, get the health care that we need. You're holding us back. Our government is holding us back instead of letting us lead fulfilling lives and fulfill our full potential. Mm -hmm. um, so I would just hope that people will watch this documentary and realize that what's happening is not okay and that we should be able to, you know, get the mobility aids that we need to live our fullest lives. Yeah, I, I, I just honestly, I, I would love to just put this in the homes of every person in America, uh, <laughs> because I think it's that important. Um, I yeah. really do. And, you know, and, you know, aside from that, like, we want you to continue to shine in making movies and being in movies. Um, and we don't want anything holding you back from anything that you get to experience. And, and you know, that's your right to, to be able just to live your life the best way you possibly can. Um, so, you know, that that's, that's something that's also got to be remembered too. 
Um, now, I, I, listen, of course, you know, when you're making a documentary, when you're also, you're directing it, but also you're a creator of it and you're in it as well. Uh, what was the biggest challenges you kind of faced in the actual production of things? You know what, this was an interesting production because we filmed everything through Zoom like yeah. this. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we actually luckily didn't really run into too many technical challenges. Um, all of our subjects did a great job placing their cameras. So we had some nice camera angles to work with when we were editing it all together. Mm -hmm. um, we had some sound issues every now and then, but um, overall it actually was like one of the smoothest uh, post-production oh, um, experiences I've ever had. <laughs> well, we're going to join your set then, Rachel. Right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, what is next for you at this crazy moment in time? What is next for you? Next up, uh, I've been writing a pilot called Lame, and it's about a group of friends with disabilities, and it's a comedy, and we actually did include a whole, like, sort of monologue scene where one of the characters goes on a rant about health insurance, Great. and she's drunk, and she's throwing french fries on the ground. She's like, and then you owe another dollar and another. <laughs> And it is so funny, but it is so relevant. Um, so I, I love finding different ways to include, you know, like like uh, socially relevant themes within all of my work, even if it's a comedy pilot, even if it's a Hallmark romantic Christmas movie. I just really think it's important to spread awareness to um, all the causes that are, you know, affecting the country right now um specifically dealing with diversity and disability so 100 that's been on my plate yeah oh, i love how amazingly creative you are utilizing these interesting times and I'm, I'm i'm so glad for that and i i really find you uh just an inspirational filmmaker and and i and i love this the energy that you, you share as a filmmaker and i'll just be curious to know um for our audience who are a lot of filmmakers <laughs> watching um, is there any kind of piece of advice that you have that maybe you go by for you and your career that's important to you that you could encourage others in the industry as well? Ooh, that's good. Um, I would say just follow your gut and do what you love and uh, learn as much as you can about every facet of the film industry. Mm -hmm. um, I've been teaching myself how to edit. I'm newly starting to direct I've been producing I've been writing and I think it's just so important to to know a little bit about everything and, and choose your focus um last year for the disability film challenge our editor dropped out last minute and I was like I'm never going through this again so I learned how to edit wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think it's really important when you have such a passion for filmmaking and creating and sharing stories mm -hmm. to know a little bit about every part of it so that you can always, um, you know, be helpful to your team and uh, be able to tell the story as, as beautifully and as uniquely from your own perspective as possible. Oh. I, I, I would, I, well, thank you for your TED talk. That was beautiful. Um, <laughs> no, honestly, you're so, I, I, you're so talented and so multi-talented. And I love that, you know, even when there are things, you know, in the way I haven't edited before, I'm going to learn to edit. That's amazing. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm so glad we have you in this industry. And I'm so glad of the encouraging support that you put in uh, for those that have a disability and, and your voice is so important for, for that also as well. And, and so thank you so much um, for making your film and, and just keep making more movies for us, please. <laughs> thank you. I will. <laughs> I plan to. <laughs> uh -huh.